Hey guys, today we are talking about inheritance once again in C++. I've covered that topic before, but today we're going to dive a bit deeper because we're going to look at uh, multiple inheritance. So one single class can inherit from uh, different classes at the same time. Okay, so we are back on hacker rank as always, and we have here three classes, right? A, B, and C. And they each implement their own version of a function that is called func. So uh, this is class A, and uh, you have the constructor. It's, it, um, it sets the call A member variable to zero. It's an int, and it's, uh, defined, it's defined, declared here. Uh, so this is public, this is private. So you have the member variable here, and then you have a void function called inc, and it just increments call A by one. The, the value of the, the member variable called A, it increases it by one. And then you have protected, which is an access specifier we visited, I think, in a previous tutorial. And it's, it has this uh, void function called func. As a parameter, it has a reference to an int variable. And uh, the reason why it's a reference is because uh, there is no, that function does not return any value. So whatever manipulation that happens here, whatever change that is done to that variable will reflect automatically to uh, the variable pass as an argument to that function. So it's a reference. It acts directly on the uh, on the variable pass. So there is no return statements in that function. So uh, this will uh, multiply the value of a by two. And uh, here you have a getter int gets a. And you have uh, a very similar class again here, class b. It does not inherit from class a, OK? These are different classes. You have class a. Then you have class b, which is very similar but it simply multiplies the value pass uh, to the func uh, method. It multiplies that by three. And in class C, which is again very similar, the only change is it multiplies the value of A by five. So what we have here is class D, and this is what we have in our editor. We now have to implement the um, update val function right here. And the instructions that say we need to modify class D and implement the function update val, which sets this val to new val. So the value of um, val here, that val int variable, is one. In the constructor, it's set to one. So when we create a, an object or we instantiate that class, val is going to be equal to one. We are supposed to set the value of val to new val. New val is what is passed to our update val function here. And we are supposed to do that only by calling the func methods defined in class A, B, and C. So in this editor here, class D, I can simply say val uh, equals new val. This is not how we're supposed to implement this class. The other thing that we need to pay attention to is that um, new val only has two, three, and five as its prime factors. So if val, new val, sorry, new val has two as its prime factor, then we need to call um, uh, the func methods defined in class A. All right, if it has three as its prime factor, then we're supposed to call the func method defined in class B right here. If it has five as its prime factor, then we need to call the func method defined in class C. So we're going to use a while loop here because if you check here the sample output, it will count how many times we have called uh, the func method in class A or B's func method or C's func method. So although the explanation seems a bit long, it's quite easy to implement. The first thing I'm going to do here is have a while loop. And I'm going to say while new file is divisible by two. And I can do that using um, the uh, modulus operator while new val is divisible by two, right? Zero is a remember. I want to divide the value of um, new val by two, right? And I want to call the func method from class A. Remember in a uh, previous tutorial, I said you can use something like this. You could say A and here call func. All right, so our program knows class A exists. That is why I'm getting these methods here. But I don't see the func methods. If I go back at the top here, 
func is defined here, how come it does not show up in here in the suggested value? Well, the reason is protected is the access specifier here. So protected means only the child or derived classes can access that function. So what we have to do here is make D a derived class of class A, like this. Now, if I hover like that, I can see func because you can access it. So what I'm going to do here is simply pass val. And I'm passing it by reference, right? So if you check the implementation once again, it takes a reference to an in variable. So when you, you pass it, you just have to pass the name of that variable. And under the hood, it's passing it by reference. Now, next up is very easy. We just need to repeat that. Check if it's divisible by three, because three has to be a prime factor. And I can simply call class B here. But we should have, again, an error right here, because it cannot recognize that function. So we need now to also add public B. And now class D is a derived class of class A and class B. So this is multiple inheritance. You can, uh, one simple class, a single class, can have multiple parent classes. And now we can also repeat that for class C, where five has to be a prime factor. And again, if I pass C here, we're gonna get an error because we need to implement inheritance here for class C as well. Okay, so let's run this code right now. We can see that we passed the test. A was called once, B was called once, and C was called once. The explanation is given right here that at the beginning, you know, it's gonna be, um, val is gonna be equal to two, then next up two times three is six, and then six times five is 30. That's why everything is called once. If we submit it, let's check if we passed all the uh, test cases. And we did. And let's check, for instance, test case four. We passed in 180, and A was called twice because uh, at first it became 90, then it became 45. Then from there, we divided it by three, and we got, um, 45 divided by three, I believe is 15, then divided by three again is five. And finally we got uh, the function C, five divided by five is uh, you know one. So um, we made use here of the prime factors and that's why we got that result. Uh, you can see more of those if you have enough hackers on HackerRank, you, know, uh, you can see other outputs. But uh, the point here is we were able to make use of multiple inheritance and a simple while loop and also that notation uh, using the classes as namespaces to access the uh, specific implementation of one particular function. And we were able to solve that challenge pretty easily. So that's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please make sure you share it, subscribe to my channel, uh, leave your questions in the comment sections or your suggestions or even objections, and I will catch you next time. Bye.